I pick favorite animals. It's it's just how it is. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't I don't pick favorite pets. I don't pick pick favorite kids. I don't have a favorite. They're all equal. They're all my kiddos. No, I do pick favorites, and Betty is one of them. And I frankly feel embarrassed that I've never given a video just dedicated to Betty. And frankly, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, why would I ever make a video just in an attempt to sell merchandise at goherpingshop.com? I know this shirt and hoodie that's also available at goherpingshop.com. I know it has a toad that kind of looks like Betty. I know it says Betty on the page. And I, yeah, I know I used the, I used a picture of Betty to design it, but it's not this, this video is for Betty Betty, not this Betty. Don't go further. Don't ask why I'm wearing a hoodie in 104 degree weather. I, do, I didn't lose the t-shirts. I don't know where I put it, okay? <laughs> I have to wear the hoodie and I'm so hot right now. <laughs> I'm already sweating. <laughs> this is Betty, the American Toad. She's my favorite toad. She's probably my favorite animal. She's in like the top three, probably. Betty. It's Betty. I just like the name Betty. I just can't stop saying Betty. Uh, she's one of my Adventure Time animals. There's a there's a character named Betty. She doesn't look anything like Betty from Adventure Time, but I, I thought Betty was a fitting name. This is Betty. Hi there, I'm Betty. First off, why am I not wearing gloves? Because this is a toad, not a frog. Frogs have very damp skin that's very sensitive. Toads have very warty, thick, dry skin that does not absorb human oil like frogs do. Stop freaking out. You can touch her as much as you want. I mean, you probably shouldn't. Most toads don't like it, especially Betty. She hates everything, she hates everyone, she hates life. She's angry at the world. You can see it in her eyes, it's pretty easy to tell. She's probably cursing you out right now, but she doesn't have the vocal cords to do it. I've had Betty for years now. Um, I don't, I should know the number. I think it's like five years or something. I've, oh. At Fur and Amphibian, she's very good about not peeing on you, especially when you just take her out and like feed her. I don't handle Betty on a usual basis. This is mostly just for videos. Um, overall, she's very calm though and very puffed up. She looks quite fat, it's cause she is fat. A happy fat toad's a happy toad, as someone said, and I'm like, okay, I'll go with that. Um, but she's also just filled with air to kind of look bigger and scarier. And overall, she's obviously very comfortable because she's not like doing much other than tinkling a little bit. Betty is a wild caught toad. You can really not find, most most toads are not captive bred. Uh, I want to do a video on the differences. I already filmed one, but I didn't like it. So I'm going to redo it on uh, like whether wild caught animals are always bad. She's one that I wild caught myself. I won't go into detail because I already did, I think, in my where I got my reptiles video if you want to. Like, if you care about that. But long story short, I used to try and avoid showing the wild caught animals because, like, when I had a couple hundred subscribers, if some kid was like, oh, well, you have this toad, can I go catch a toad? And I was like, I don't know, I guess. Like, here, here's the risks, but it's not the end of the world if you go catch a toad. But now there's more than a few hundred subscribers, so I get worried showing it because it might look like I'm, like, promoting. Like, just, like, if, imagine if all of us went out and caught a toad right now. The world would be void of 200,000 toads. <laughs> I don't, I don't think the world will appreciate that. So um, I guess we need to like, I don't know, I'll put our names in a hat and like five of us can go catch a toad. I don't know. Obviously, as long as it's uh, within your legal limits, I can't control whether you do it, but I have talked about the risks of wild animals in the past, which I'll do again in a newer video. That's not the focus of this. We're focusing on Betty. And Pigmans are really interesting animals. Wow, who, who knew? You didn't need me to tell me that. But one of the reasons that I find them interesting is they have so, many eggs, like thousands and thousands. One toad can have just thousands of eggs. And there's of those eggs, a lot are just not gonna hatch. I don't know the real numbers, I probably should. Let's say you have a thousand eggs and half of them hatch. Then you've got 500 eggs that hatch. You have 500 little tadpoles. Of those tadpoles, they're gonna continually be dying, eating each other. Some are just gonna have genetic and issues, mutations and stuff. Of those, let's say 250, grow up to the point that they have legs. Now you've got 250 uh, little like things kind of growing legs. They start coming out, into, out of the water. They start getting eaten by other stuff. Some of them just keep dying of natural causes and other genetic issues. And then say you've got 125 left. These toads are like sub-adults, but they continually get eaten because they can't really defend themselves. Their only source of defense is kind of peeing every so often and maybe hopping, but not very quickly. They kind of just crawl around. So let's just say a lot get eaten and you're left with 25. And then of these 25, they're gonna have a lot of issues throughout their life before they reach sexual maturity. So let's say you're left with like 10 adult toads. 
this one toad went from having a thousand eggs to having maybe like 10 healthy babies. I don't know what the real number is. Obviously it's gonna differ a lot based on so many things. The environment it's in, whether it's in captivity, but I think that's a decent rundown of how it works. So my point in mentioning that is <laughs> they will just have so many youngins with the intention of reproducing and reproducing and re producing so that the population can ease to grow and they can like add their genetics to the world. Something that comes along with that is a lot of animals just start randomly dying, especially amphibians. There's a lot of arguments over how whether or not death in certain amphibians is normal. If you ask me, it seems to be normal because there's a lot of people that come to me and they're like, this amphibian just died out of nowhere and I'll get like the same thing happening every single day and they're like, everything is perfect. Obviously, what is perfect, husbandry-wise, I mean. Like, was the care perfect? I didn't see it. They can describe it, they can change things, they could have maybe accidentally made issues. And I'm sure I've done the same throughout the past, because like, I've had animals die, because animals die sometimes. Not often, the majority shouldn't be dying, but every so often there's gonna be a death of an animal. Believe it or not, wow. It's not like the pet tube community didn't already know that. And my point in mentioning that is Betty actually got kind of sick at some point. Um, and a lot of her, I don't know if they're relatives, but a lot of the others that I had in there and with her ended up dying a few years ago, which I also went over in that uh, where I got my amphibians video or where I got my animals. And I was really kind of losing hope for Betty because there's only so much you can do for a dying amphibian, unfortunately. Um, there, obviously there's a lot of stuff that can be treated by a vet, but with amphibians it's pretty different and there's, it'll happen quickly. There's not much to diagnose. Maybe there's a chance that you can, but even if you can, you might not be able to do much about it, depending on what it is, of course, so that because there are things that you can treat and fix. But I was worried that Betty was just gonna... <laughs> People get angry when I say this. I was worried Betty was gonna croak, okay? She was kind of sad, she wasn't eating much, she was kind of going downhill, she was losing a bit of weight. I made sure the husbandry was as good as I could get it. She was by herself in a safe, comfortable, quiet area with lots of food, lots of attention. And I was just, she, I felt like she was kind of on her deathbed, but it was just like a little 20 gallon enclosure instead. But somehow she actually recovered. I think she literally just was sick, like not like treatable, illness, she just like had a cold or something. That's not the right term for an amphibian being sick. This was a while ago and I can't remember the details, but she just had a down month. It was like maybe, I think it was about a month. And then she just ended up recovering. Uh, she ended up eating again. She gained her weight back. And now I've had her for years and she is just super lively. She's like one of the liveliest in the room. Uh, zero hesitation eating, still like very slowly gaining weight. She's done growing. Um, just so much alertness, cl clarity everywhere and I'm st extremely overprotective of Betty. <laughs> I caught her, okay? She dropped six inches. Shush, shush, stop, stop. I can hear you typing. I hear your keyboard crackling right now. Please stop. My ego is fragile. Uh, long story short, Betty, I thought she was a goner, but she came back and now she's doing amazing. And now when Betty dies- I die. She eats pretty much anything. Um, she mostly eats dubia roaches, but she gets to mix it up with hornworms, waxworms, mealworms, superworms, basically anything but crickets. We actually have crickets right now because um, I wish we didn't, but I forgot to order insects, so I had to sprint myself to PetSmart and pick some crickets up. So I ruined my streak of not buying crickets in like five years. She doesn't get the crickets. She, she's too good for crickets. Crickets are, there's nothing wrong with crickets. If you're feeding crickets, that's fine. I just don't like crickets. They're healthy, they work. They're just, I don't like crickets. She also just has so little physical issues. I don't know, like she's just like a perfect toad. She is the Amer, I want her to be the face of American toads. I should just photograph her and just cover Wikipedia's American toad page just with, actually I'm gonna do that now. And even as you can see here, this is not a very normal thing for me at least, where you can just let a toad sit there. And I don't, like some animals I feel more comfortable sitting down with when, because they do like jump and come, just catapult themselves to the ground. Uh, and yes, Betty kind of took a tumble a second ago, but, but my instincts have gotten better over the years. And she's like crawling around. They really crawl more than they hop. They were kind of rarely hop. I like Betty. Hopefully you like Betty. And she's on this shirt now, but she doesn't even know it. Betty kind of pays her rent by being on merchandise. See, I'm literally, I'm petting a toad. This is bizarre. Betty does have uh, little poison sacs up in the front, kind of near her eyes. They're this big, large kidney looking things. They kind of look like some peanuts. If you have like a dog and you live in the United States and it's ever like come back from being in the woods and its mouth is kind of foamy, there's a chance it's because it was playing with a toad and uh, got some of that poison. I don't believe it's very toxic, but I'm also not taking liability for that. 
Because if you, like, drink her toxins and you die... I mean, you can't sue me if you're dead, but I don't... Just don't drink. Don't touch... Don't lick the toxins or lick your fingers after touching her. I don't want to do it because Betty deserves to not be done to, but... What? I don't want to, like, press on them, but, like, if you squeeze these, uh, white foam will come out and that'll be the... The, the poison and it essentially just deflects things that are going to eat her so that's pretty epic betty you go poison those predators and that's kind of the only defense like it kind of just tastes bad i think i haven't tasted it myself believe it or not but i think it's just kind of sour kind of bitter or gross i'm making that up i have no idea what it tastes like <laughs> it's, it's probably not a good taste um and then she urinates which <sighs> okay i have tasted reptile pee it wasn't on it was completely involuntary Okay, sometimes you have to check the bottom of an animal, like, you know, check the plaster on of a turtle, check the belly of an animal, and I don't like flipping the animals over. So what do you do? You get on your back, you lift the animal, and you look. Sometimes when you're focusing, your mouth might be open a little bit, and sometimes Franklin's the animal that's above you, and he just happens to have a full bladder, and it just comes out and it ends up on your mouth, so you know what pee tastes like. It doesn't taste that good. It's like a weird seafood. I don't recommend it. This is Betty. I think I'm going to end this video. <laughs> if you want non-Betty merchandise, it's definitely a different Betty than this Betty. It's completely unrelated from Betty. This has nothing to do with Betty. I feel so bad for the person writing these captions on the video because they're, they're, the number of times they've had to type out Betty is just, it's, they're just going to go to sleep and the word just Betty is going to be echoing in their mind. Betty. 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 <laughs> Betty. See, now probably that, that caption probably said, whispers Betty. Can you guys stop saying I do drugs? I really don't.